friends. Today we are reading Uncle Andy's, and this is by uh, James Warhol. So Andy is actually Andy Warhol, and he used to be called Andrew Warhol. So this is actually a person who was the uh, nephew of Andy, Andy Warhol. So let's go ahead and see what we read. All right, Uncle Andy's. He looks kind of fun, doesn't he? I write, looking back on those days, the one thing I remember most is thinking my dad had the best job in the world. Our yard was always so much fun, much more fun than anyone else's in the neighborhood. My oldest brother was already away at college, but there were still six of us at home. Dad had lots of jobs, but for now, he mostly did, was a junk man. Sometimes, the neighbor complained that our yard looked like a junkyard. The real junkyard was about a mile away on a dirt road. It was up a really steep hill. It had everything, old cars, old pop machines, and old airplane engines, you, may, you name it. If there was, uh, if there, it was there on the hill. Dad's job was to take things apart and separate metals aluminum, copper, brass, and steel. When there was enough, he loaded the trunk and hauled it to another junkyard. Dad was always bringing home junk, and sometimes he'd say to me, now, Jamie, this can really make good art. Then he'd put a bunch of it together in an interesting way. Mom always was yelling at Dad, for Pete's sake, Paul, quit junking up the house, and Paul... When you're going to get, when are you going to get rid of that stuff anyhow? But he likes playing with the junk. Sorry if you hear my dog upstairs. <laughs> One day, Dad came home from work and announced, It's time to visit Bubba and Uncle Andy in the city. We'll leave tomorrow morning. Oh, we were so excited. It wasn't often that we got to visit our grandma and our famous artist uncle in New York City. He had to, a lot of getting ready to do. Dad had work to do on the car. Mary Lou and Eva had to make sandwiches, and Georgie and I had to pack the car. And little Maddie and Marty, well, they didn't do much. They would just get in the way. The next morning, Mom woke us up early, uh, and we were finally on our way. We saw nothing but cornfields and cow pastures at first. Then we slowly counted the seven tunnels that it would take to, for us to get there. When we came to the last tunnel, we all perked up. All of a sudden, the world became very different. There were giant buildings, honking taxis, and people going every which way. Dad slowly moved his way uptown to Uncle Andy's. There we were, all eight of us standing in front of a huge black door ringing the bell. After a long wait, the door unlatched and slowly opened. Uncle Andy peered out for a minute and let out a long, oh! Dad always thought it was best not to, to phone ahead, so it would be a surprise. It certainly was. Uncle Andy was always very, very surprised. He showed us in, and we made our way to the kitchen where Grandma was. Bubba drowned us with wet kisses, like she always did, and fixed us the dinner of salamis, breads, and cheese. Soon, all of us chattering and eating came to an end, and it all came time for sleep. Uncle Andy showed us to our makeshift beds. I slept on the top floor in, of a propped-up old door covered with cushions. That wouldn't be very fun, would it? That would not be a nice place to sleep. In the morning, I noticed that I was surrounded by towers of soup boxes. I thought Uncle Andy and Bubba sure ate a lot of soup. But that wasn't it at all. Uncle Andy didn't buy all those soup boxes. He built them out of wood and painted each and painted each one. They were his were art and really important too, because Andy told us not to touch any of it. Those look like Campbell's soup boxes, don't they? We know that Campbell's soup. Dad always remembered to bring Uncle Andy something interesting from the junk rock. This time, it was a giant magnet with a bunch of bolts stuck to it. Uncle Andy peered over his, his glasses with a, at it really carefully. And after a pause, he went, oh, gee, wow. 
Then we really knew he liked it. He decided that it should go by he, it should go right by the front door. Uncle Andy had 25 cats, all named Sam. That'd be hard to figure out, right? They were always hiding in the house. That was just a, like a giant uh, amusement park. It was perfect for hide-and-go-seek and racing. It wasn't long before the six of us were flying up and down the stairs and through all the rooms like a band of wild monkeys. Uncle Andy thought everything was art in some way or another. That's why his house was so fantastic. Each of the rooms was filled to the brim with all sorts of neat things. There were always some new things to see. Right in the middle of the entranceway, there was a great piece, a giant piece of crumpled metal. It looked like it might have gotten stuck there and couldn't go any farther. Uncle Andy explained to us, Oh, that's a fabulous, that's a piece of, of fabulous art by a famous artist. We were impressed. Dad had a lot of that back home. Uncle Andy was always making art. He loved, we loved watching him paint in his studio. He made regular stuff like soup cans, pop bottles, and money looked like real art. Mary Lou and Eva just looked at his giant pictures of Elvis Presley. I was a singer. Mom, always war aware of unnecessary clutter, asked, Gee, Andy, when are you going to get rid of this stuff? Uncle Andy start startled, said, Oh, no, this is art. It's going to be worth a lot of money. Mom really didn't understand. With all of the commotion that we caused, Uncle Andy decided it might be better for us to be put to work. It wasn't long before each of us had different jobs. He knew I liked to do art, so I, so he let me help him with his giant paint-by-number sailboat painting. That's super cool, right? At night, Uncle Andy went out to parties to see other famous people. In the morning, he patiently sat by his door waiting, oh, we patiently sat by his door, waiting for it to open so we could tell him, all, he could tell us all about who he had met. Once, Maddie surprised Uncle Andy by going into his room a little too early. He let out a shriek because he didn't have his wig on yet. Of course, we all knew Uncle Andy was bald, just like Dad and Uncle John. Andy had wigs for every occasion, messy makeup wigs, multicolorful afternoon wigs, and formal wigs for parties. He had given Dad his old wigs back at home, and he had a lot of fun with them. Wouldn't that be fun to play with those wigs? Each day was a chance to see something new. He especially, we especially loved hiding in the studio when Uncle Andy had important art people over to talk about his work. They would all huddle around the paintings, pointing and peering. They really thought Uncle Andy was onto something. He knew his paintings were super neat, and he made me want to do my own art when I got home. Finally, Dad announced it's time to go home. That night, we packed up all our things. Again, Mary Lou and Eva made sandwiches. Bubba added a few salamis. Uncle Andy was on his way out the door with one of his soup can paintings when I told him we had to leave in the morning. He replied, oh, oh, really? I have to go sell this picture to a man waiting at the corner. You know... He's a taxi cab king. He really likes my work. Then I'm going to go to a party. Oh, so have a fabulous trip. Jamie, bye. We went to bed early, and before we knew it, Mom was wiggling my toes and saying, Time to get up. Bubba helped us with our things, and we trudged into, uh, out into the dark morning. At the foot of the steps were a bunch of boxes that Uncle Andy had left for us uh, with lots of neat stuff, including art supplies for me. Bubba drowned us with those wet kisses, and we got into the car. Soon we were weaving our way downtown to go through with the first tunnel. We all fell asleep wondering about our next trip back to Uncle Andy's. As we got older, we made many more trips back to that faraway city, and Dad continued bringing interesting junk from the junkyard for Uncle Andy. 
he really liked doing art. And I learned that art is something that is all around us all of the time. In the corner of my bedroom, I made an art studio for my own, of my own. And although mom fretted and fussed as usual over the mess it was, she didn't make me clean it up. She even woke me up on Saturdays to drive me to an art class. You know, I think mom finally understands what art is all about. And that's our book about Andy Warhol. Uh, he was a famous artist during the pop art period, which is like in the 60s, uh, kind of similar to Roy Lichtenstein, which I believe we are going to talk about later, or maybe we already talked about. So I hope that you guys are doing well. I hope I get to see you all soon, and I hope you're going to have a great day. Bye, friends.